Hi, Jonathan Edwards here. Uh, somebody wrote in asking me about trauma, um, what traditional East Asian medicine has to say about trauma and what treatment approaches um, can be useful. And, you know, trauma is a big subject and there's a lot of different types of trauma. But I think, you know, one thing that uh, traumatic experiences share is that the body is no longer a safe place to be, right? Um, one of the ways that traditional Chinese medicine talks about this is the, the shun uh, is like the spirit uh, that resides in the heart. It's a metaphor in a sense. And um, the, that spirit or spirits, plural, is likened to like a bird that's perching delicately in the nest here at home. And it's easy for that bird to get startled. There's a lot of different things that can happen. Even something as simple as, you know, too loud of a noise for a moment, we may dissociate our, our, our kind of central uh, heart spirit. And, and Chinese medicine recognizes various spirits associated with the different organs. It's not just, it's not just one, um, but this kind of central spirit that has to do with our mind and our consciousness can, can flutter away. We can dissociate when that happens. And, um, you know, we're living in a time of great upheaval and there's a, there's a lot of trauma and it's, it's easy for people to walk around in a partially dissociated state and compassion if that's your experience now or in the past. Um, as a practitioner, when somebody comes in uh, and it's, you know, either they're, they're, it's clear because they're saying so or it's clear just from the signs in the room that there's some trauma present. Um, one of the first things I try to do is, you know, there's there's a nonverbal communication that happens. That's first of all, if I can if I can sink back and be really grounded and spacious, that's going to help give implicit permission for them to also start to settle a little bit. And when they're on the treatment table, um, you know, doing things like very gentle rocking of the, you know, I'll hold the feet and, and rock gently and let the body start to uh, start to release some tension. Um, in terms of actual treatments, you know, I don't want to get technical here, but generally speaking, we're working a lot with, of course, with the heart um, and the lungs, which, you know, work hand in hand from our perspective, but also just with, with yin and the blood more broadly. Um, physical trauma causes blood stasis typically, and emotional trauma, I think, causes blood stasis and affects the blood on a subtler level. So there's a need to gently move the blood and nourish the blood. Um, and there's a need to nourish yin. It's like if you create, if you build the yin nest, then the yang uh, will reside there in that nest. So typically treatments are very gentle. Certainly don't want to startle somebody or cause a lot of pain or, or re-traumatize on any level. So gentle nourishing treatments, there are particular channels that we'll tend to use more often. Uh, in, in different types of trauma. And then herbally, um, again, it's, it's typically gentle, nourishing treatment. Um, I like to use herbs like Tian Mindong or asparagus tuber, Mai Mindong and Shizandra berry Wu uh, These are herbs that generally nourish the yin. I like to put some herbs like Dan Shen, uh, Salvia Miltioriza, which is both nourishing, but also again, moving and invigorating to the blood to help it's like helping uh, some of the repatterning to start to happen. Um, so those are, those are some initial thoughts on, on treating trauma. There's, there's a lot more that could be said. There are certain treatments from the five element Worsleyan uh, tradition that are specific for kind of venting out trauma through the nervous system. There's also Western herbs like skullcap and milky oat seed that are very useful for calming and nourishing the nervous system. Um, but that's a basic, that's a basic overview of my, my understanding of how to work with traumatized individuals, at least at a first as a first pass. Thanks.